the House will come to order. Prayer by the Chaplain. Good afternoon. It's an honor to uh, share a piece of this President's Day with you and to pray with you. So let's pray. Holy God, you show us the splendor of diversity and the beauty of your unity in your own divine life. Make us who came from many nations with many languages a united people that delights in our many gifts. Defend our liberties and give those whom we have entrusted with authority the spirit of wisdom that there might be justice and peace in our land. We lift before you all who govern this wonderful state. May those who hold power understand that it is a trust from you to be used for the service of your people. We call to mind before you all whom it is easy for to forget. Those who are homeless, destitute, sick, isolated, and all who have no one to care for them. May we bring help and healing to those who are broken in body and spirit, that they may have comfort in sorrow, comfort, company in loneliness, and a place of safety and warmth. We ask all this in your holy name. Amen. The chaplain for today is Reverend Craig Hansen from Our Savior's Lutheran Church, Circle Pines, Minnesota. Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing and recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Members, when the Chief Clerk calls the roll today to establish a quorum, please state your name, your location, that you are present. And members using the remote voting technology should also press the green or yes button when your name is called. The clerk will take the roll. Akam. Akam Minnetonka, present. Akam Minnetonka, present. Agbaje. Agbaje, St. Paul, present. Agbaje, St. Paul, present. Acklin. Acklin, St. Paul, present. Acklin, St. Paul, present. Albright. Albright. Anderson. Albright, Prior Lake, present. Albright, Prior Lake, present. Anderson. Anderson, St. Paul, present. Anderson, St. Paul, present. Backer. Backer, Browns Valley, present. Backer, Browns Valley, present. Bonner. Bonner, St. Paul, present. Bonner, St. Paul, present. Barr. Barr, St. Paul, present. Barr, St. Paul, present. Baker. Baker, Delano, present. Baker, Delano, present. Becker Finn. Becker Finn, Roseville, present. Becker Finn, Roseville, present. Bennett. Bennett, Albert Lee, present. Bennett, Albert Lee, present. Berg. Berg, St. Paul, present. Berg, St. Paul, present. Bernardi. Bernardi, New Brighton, present. Bernardi, New Brighton, present. Bierman. Beerman, Apple Valley, present. Beerman, Apple Valley, present. Bliss. Bliss, St. Paul, present. Bliss, St. Paul, present. Bo. Bo, Chan Hassan, present. Bo, Chan Hassan, present. Bolden. Bolden, Rochester, present. Bolden, Rochester, present. Burkle. Burkle, St. Paul, present. Burkle, St. Paul, present. Carlson. Carlson, Bloomington, present. Carlson, Bloomington, present. Christensen. St. Paul present. Christensen St. Paul present. Daniels. Daniels Fairbolt present. Daniels Fairbolt present. Doubt. Doubt St. Paul present. Davids. David St. Paul present. Daphne. Daphne St. Paul present. Daphne St. Paul present. Damoth. Damoth St. Paul present. Damus, St. Paul, present. Detmer. Detmer, Forest Lake, present. Detmer, Forest Lake, present. Dreskowski. Dreskowski, St. Paul, present. Eklund. Eklund, St. Paul, present. Eklund, St. Paul, present. Edelson. Edelson, Edina, present. Edelson, Edina, present. Elkins. Elkins, St. Paul, present. Elkins, St. Paul, present. Erickson. Erickson, St. Paul, present. Erickson, St. Paul, present. Feist. Feist, New Brighton, present. Feist, New Brighton, present. Fisher. Fisher, 
Fisher, St. Paul, present. Fisher, St. Paul, present. Frankie. Frankie. Frankie, St. Paul Park, present. Frankie, St. Paul Park, present. Franzen. Franzen, St. Paul, present. Franzen, St. Paul, present. Frazier. Frazier, New Hope, present. Frazier, New Hope, present. Frederick. Frederick, St. Paul, present. Frederick, St. Paul, present. Freiburg. Freiburg, Golden Valley, present. Freiburg, Golden Valley, present. Garofalo. Garofalo, Farmington, present. Garofalo, Farmington, present. Gomez. Gomez, St. Paul, present. Gomez, St. Paul, present. Green. Green, Faustin, present. Green, Faustin, present. Greenman. Greenman, St. Paul, present. Greenman, St. Paul, present. Grossel. Grossel, Clearbrook, present. Grossel, Clearbrook, present. Grunhagen. Grunhagen, Glencoe, present. Grunhagen, Glencoe, present. Haley. Haley, St. Paul, present. Hamilton. Hamilton, St. Paul, present. Hamilton, St. Paul, present. Hanson R. Hanson R, St. Paul, present. Hanson R, St. Paul, present. Hanson J. Hanson J, St. Paul, present. Hanson J, St. Paul, present. Hassan. Hassan, Minneapolis, present. Hassan, Minneapolis, present. Houseman. Houseman, St. Paul, present. Houseman, St. Paul, present. Heinrich. Heinrich, Anoka, present. Heinrich, Anoka, present. Heinzman. Heinzman, St. Paul, present. Heinzman, St. Paul, present. Her. Her, St. Paul, present. Her toss. Her toss. Hollins. Holland, St. Paul, present. Holland, St. Paul, present. Hornstein. Hornstein, Minneapolis, present. Hornstein, Minneapolis, present. Howard. Howard, St. Paul, present. Howard, St. Paul, present. Hewitt. Hewitt, Rosemount, present. Hewitt, Rosemount, present. Igo. Igo, St. Paul, present. Igo, St. Paul, present. Johnson. Johnson, St. Paul, present. Jordan. Jordan, St. Paul, present. Jordan, St. Paul, present. Jurgens. Jurgen, St. Paul, present. Jurgen, St. Paul, present. Keeler. Keeler, St. Paul, present. Keeler, St. Paul, present. Keel. Keel, St. Paul, present. Keel, St. Paul, present. Cleveland. Cleveland, St. Paul, present. Cleveland, St. Paul, present. Cagle. Cagle, Spring Lake Park, present. Cagle, Spring Lake Park, present. Katiza Watoon. Katiza Watoon, Eden Prairie, present. Katiza Watoon, Eden Prairie, present. Kosnick. Kosnick, St. Paul, present. Kosnick, St. Paul, present. Creshaw. Creshaw, Little Falls, present. Creshaw, Little Falls, present. Lee. Lee, Minneapolis, present. Lee, Minneapolis, present. Liebling. Liebling, Rochester, present. Liebling, Rochester, present. Lily. Lily, St. Paul, present. Lily, St. Paul, present. Lippert. Lippert, St. Paul, present. Lippert, St. Paul, present. Liss Lagarde. List Lagarde, St. Paul, present. List Lagarde, St. Paul, present. Long. Long, St. Paul, present. Long, St. Paul, present. Lucero. Lucero, Wright County, present. Lucero, Wright County, present. Lewick. Lewick, St. Paul, present. Lewick, St. Paul, present. Mariani. Mariani, St. Paul, present. Mariani, St. Paul, present. Marquardt. Marquardt Dilworth present. Marquardt Dilworth present. Mason. Mason Egan present. Mason Egan present. McDonald. McDonald. Mecklen. Mecklen uh, Becker Township present. Mecklen Becker Township present. Miller. Miller, St. Paul, present. Miller, St. Paul, present. Moeller. Moeller, Shoreview, present. Moeller, Shoreview, present. Moran. Moran, St. Paul, present. Moran, St. Paul, present. Morrison. Morrison, Deep Haven, present. Morrison, Deep Haven, present. Mortensen. Mortensen, St. Paul, present. Mortensen, St. Paul, present. Mueller. Mueller, St. Paul, present. Munson. Munson, St. Paul, present. Munson, St. Paul, present. Murphy. Murphy, 
Hermantown, present. Murphy, Hermantown, present. Nash. Present. Nash, St. Paul, present. Nelson M. Nelson M. Brooklyn Park, present. Nelson M. Brooklyn Park, present. Nelson N. Nelson N. Clover Township, present. Nelson N. Clover Township, present. New Brindley. New Brindley, St. Paul, present. Noor. Noor, Minneapolis, present. Noor, Minneapolis, present. Novotny. Novotny, St. Paul, present. Novotny, St. Paul, present. O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll, St. Paul, present. Olson B. Olson B. Burnsville, present. Olson B. Burnsville, present. Olson L. Olson L. St. Paul, present. O'Neill. O'Neill, St. Paul, present. O'Neill, St. Paul, present. Pulowski. Pulowski, Winona, present. Pulowski, Winona, present. Petersburg. Petersburg, Wasika, present. Petersburg, Wasika, present. Far. Far, St. Paul, present. Far, St. Paul, present. Pearson. Pearson, Rochester Township, present. Pearson, Rochester Township, present. Pinto. Pinto, St. Paul, present. Pinto, St. Paul, present. Poston. Poston, Lakeshore, present. Poston, Lakeshore, present. Pryor. Pryor, Minnetonka, present. Pryor, Minnetonka, present. Quam. Quam, Byron, present. Quam, Byron, present. Raleigh. Raleigh, St. Paul, present. Raleigh, St. Paul, present. Rasmussen. Rasmussen, St. Paul, present. Ryer. Ryer Egan, present. Ryer Egan, present. Richardson. Richardson, Mendota Heights, present. Richardson, Mendota Heights, present. Robbins. Robbins, St. Paul, present. Sandell. Sandell, Woodbury, present. Sandell, Woodbury, present. Sandstead. Sandstead, Hibbing, present. Sandstead, Hibbing, present. Schumacher. Schumacher, Laverne, present. Schumacher, Laverne, present. Schultz. Schultz, Duluth, present. Schultz, Duluth, present. Scott. Scott, St. Paul, present. Scott, St. Paul, present. Stevenson. Stevenson, St. Paul, present. Stevenson, St. Paul, present. Sundin. Sundin, St. Paul, present. Sundin, St. Paul, present. Swazinski. Swazinski, St. Paul, present. Tice. Tice, St. Paul, present. Tice, St. Paul, present. Thompson. Thompson, St. Paul, present. Thompson, St. Paul, present. Torkelson. Torkelson, St. Paul, present. Torkelson, St. Paul, present. Erdahl. Erdahl, St. Paul, present. Erdahl, St. Paul, present. Woo! Vang. Vang, Brooklyn Center, present. Vang, Brooklyn Center, present. Waslowick. Waslowick, White Bear Township, present. Waslowick, White Bear Township, present. West. West, St. Paul, present. West, St. Paul, present. Winkler. Winkler, St. Paul, present. Wolgamot. Wolgamot, St. Paul, present. Zhang J. Zhang J. Burnsville, present. Zhang J. Burnsville, present. Zhang T. Zhang T. St. Paul, present. Zhang T. St. Paul, present. Joachim. Joachim Hopkins, present. Joachim Hopkins, present. Speaker Hartman. Hartman, St. Paul. Speaker Hartman, St. Paul, present. Hertos. Hertos, McDonald, McDonald Delano present, McDonald Delano present, Greenfield present, Hertos, Hertos, I heard him. Hertos. A quorum is present. The clerk will read the journal of the preceding day. General of the House, 92nd Josh Session, Greenfield, 2021, present. 13th day, St. Paul, Minnesota, Thursday, February 11th, 2021. If there is no objection, further reading of the journal will be dispensed with, and the journal will be approved as corrected by the Chief Clerk. 
Hearing no objection, the journal is approved as corrected by the chief clerk. Reports of standing committees and divisions. A copy of this order of business is online. If there is no objection, the reports will be adopted. Hearing no objection, the reports are adopted. Second reading of House Files. Second reading of House File number 291. Second reading. Second reading of House File number 652. Second reading. Introduction of bills. The following House files have been offered for introduction today. The Chief Clerk will report the House files and give them their first reading. Introduction of first reading of House files 1080 through 1162. First reading, House files 1080 through 1162. Calendar for the day. First bill on the calendar for the day is House File 445. The clerk will report the bill. House File number 445, number one on the calendar for the day, an act relating to public safety. I call on the author of the bill, the member from Ramsey, to explain the bill. Madam Speaker uh, and members, and let me put my face up. Here we go. Madam Speaker, members, <clears throat> I'm proud of this bill, uh, and as someone who has served longer in this body than all but three of you, I counsel you to accept it, to invest in public safety and protect our constitutional rights, and to demonstrate the wisdoms of Minnesotans being there for one another. House File 445 meets the safety of all Minnesotans by creating a state contingency special revenue fund to provide resources to local public safety agencies for managing large-scale public disturbances while ensuring that the constitutional rights of public protests is protected. This bill essentially asserts the twin realities of safety and rights are both important and must be guaranteed by the state. It also asserts that people being free from harm is a shared value across the state and that Minnesotans have a deep duty uh, to help one another be safe. The bill establishes a process for both receiving and sending jurisdictions in a public safety mutual aid agreement to be, to be reimbursed, reimbursed for certain expenses. It defines what those public safety events are. It establishes criteria for eligible costs. It creates basic conditions for reimbursement eligibility. It establishes reimbursement rate rates distinct for the receiving and the sending uh, jurisdiction. It establishes a process for the reimbursement and it establishes an after action review conducted by third party expert submitted to the post board of the peace officer standards uh, training board for their learning and possible adjustment of peace officer licensing standards. It creates, um, it requires rather the creation of a model policy for public assembly response to be done by the post board and it requires all law enforcement agencies to adopt a public assembly policy identical or substantially similar to the post model policy. Finally, and what I will be amending out, unfortunately, but necessarily in order to compromise, the bill has a requirement that peace officers licensed by the state be held directly accountable by the post or meeting their own department's current public assembly policies subject to the code of conduct provision of their state individual license. Members, before I move to amend uh, 445 with the customary author's amendment to have this bill uh, before the body in the form the author recommends its final passage, I wanna lay out some really important context for why this bill is here. Why it's here now at this early stage of our legislative session, 
why it's constructed the way that it is, and why the issue it seeks to ad address requires us, all of us, to rise above our own comfort of where we place ourselves politically on this issue. As you know, I'm a Democrat, a proud member of the DFL political community. Last week, having moved the bill that waits before you today through the House of Ways and Means Committee, I received a correspondence from a, from a Republican colleague who I respect even as we vote more often than not on opposite sides of many issues. Part of his frustration had to do with the speed at which the legislation is being moved. And I believe that comes from a desire to deeply understand the underlying policy that it evokes, a desire that I also share. Here's part of what he sent me. This is not an agency bill. This is probably one of the most pertinent subjects in the state and possibly the nation right now. The most pertinent, pertinent subject in the state and the nation right now. Members, it's important that we pause and consider what my Republican friend observed about this bill. Even if he might vote against it, I don't know where he is on it. Because we are indeed in a vital moment and it is our duty to grasp the truth of it and consider carefully what direction our people should go in response to that moment. We are here because in May of last year, a man was horribly killed in front of our eyes by agents of the state of Minnesota. He was a black man and the state license agents were police officers of our largest city. He was not the first black man killed by our police, and this was not the first instance of police killing a black citizen of Minnesota, or for that matter, of black citizens across our nation. That African Americans are disproportionately killed by police officers is an indisputable fact. If this conversation in, on this bill cannot start there, then tragically, there is no conversation. And we, as the elected representatives of the people of our republic, would be derelict in conducting the work of governance we are privileged with election to do. What followed the killing of George Floyd, as you all witnessed, was an eruption of anger, despair, and moral outrage never before seen in our state's history. And that outrage spread like a prairie fire across our nation, even across the world. Every major city in the U.S. and even many of our nation's small towns were disrupted by mass demonstrations as Americans of all races marched en masse in our streets, exercising the most fundamental right embedded in name in our unifying U.S. Constitution the freedom of public assembly to amplify our individual freedom of speech. Nothing, I submit, separates our nation from virtually all others on this planet and across human history than that most basic of all our personal and group freedoms. It was the citizenry's voice of the human indecency of George's killing but it was a voice that spoke to something related and beyond that. It was a voice about Philando Castile, about 12-year-old Tamir Rice, about Eric Garner and Walter Scott, and about lesser known victims like Yvette Smith, Victor White III, 13-year-old Andy Lopez, Jonathan Farrell, and literally hundreds of other black and people of color most like George, unarmed. I can't even begin to find a way to emphasize the deep trauma that stretches back generations to the very founding of our nation that the American people, particularly our black citizens, have experienced through fatal encounters with our system of law enforcement. I know that this truth of the police killing of unarmed African-Americans is tough to hear and to face. 
and many of us may feel our sensibilities and beliefs severely challenged. We might even feel somehow insulted by the suggestion that there is something fundamentally wrong at the core of our law enforcement systems. But that sense is what drove thousands of our fellow Minnesotans to our public streets. And I believe their sense is correct. And I also believe it is our solemn duty as their representatives to respond and to act on their desire for a better way. One that aligns with our core values of decency and respect for civil rights enshrined in our state and federal constitution. The moment of decision about this truth and the need for a different way than that my Republican colleague correctly knows is before us is in fact real. We have a crisis that goes to the heart of who we are as a people as we are being challenged by the de facto manner in which black lives do not matter. And as such, challenged by how to reset, redesign, recreate a system of public safety that can be powerfully centered in outcomes of racial justice. And at the same time, we are also challenged by whether our First Amendment freedoms to demand that very change will be upheld by the actions of the very system that killed George Floyd and the others. This bill, members, doesn't answer all of that. What it does do is it recognizes it. And in doing so, it provides two responses to inseparable issues of the crisis. The need for a strong public safety response for protecting personal and, uh, personal and property, and the need to have that public safety response protect our First Amendment right to public assembly. The governor put together a bill that, frankly, in my opinion, only answers the first of those responses. And the people's body, our House, through its Committee on Public Safety, added the second needed response in order to complete what was, in essence, an incomplete bill. And that's the bill that we have brought before you today, a more complete bill. Let me say, I believe the governor is correct to have the state allocate resources to help empower an effective mutual aid action for public safety. The scale of what we saw last spring overwhelms any single local jurisdiction to manage. Managing for safety goes beyond focusing on local citizens demonstrating. It also involves guarding against opportunistic harm doers, both local and outsiders, who arrive to take advantage of large scale events. For instance, there currently are several individuals indicted for arson and other crimes carried out during the protests in Minneapolis and St. Paul who traveled from their homes in greater Minnesota to commit those crimes during last spring's protests. Also under federal indictment is an individual who self-identifies with anti-government groups with ties to white supremacists who traveled across state lines to repeatedly discharge a semi-automatic weapon into a Minneapolis police precinct that has been set on fire. The way local public safety agencies have traditionally faced such a challenge has been through mutual aid agreements, as everyone here knows, across several jurisdictions to provide the critical mass needed to meet those threats. Faced, however, with the hesitancy of several local public safety departments to engage outside of their own jurisdictions in these new high-risk engagements on the unprecedented scale we witnessed last year without an updated command structure to meet those new dynamics, the governor has proposed a way for the state to assist with badly needed resources and guidance. That's what his request makes possible. And so I agree with the governor that we need the best assurances 
of our public safety systems to effectively respond to these very real threats to person and property. But as I have said, and I can't emphasize it enough, members, another truth must be addressed as we address that particular challenge. Faced with the unfortunate, awful behavior of many law enforcement officers last spring, for instance, the indiscriminate drive-by tear gassing of citizens, firing tear canisters into the front porches of homes where occupants were merely observing the events, destroying personal property by puncturing tires of parked cars and retail lots, all of this captured on video and more. The House Public Safety Committee added measures to hold state license officers accountable to post board action. The very board that issues, issues licenses to this profession. And it added after action review reports and the development of a state model policy for public safety management of public assembly promised under constitutional rights. Some here will say what the House committee did is extraneous to the governor's request. Or, quote, we can address that issue at another time. Members, following that advice would be a tragic tone deaf state that refuses to listen to the voice of the people. The people of Minnesota have already spoken on this and have done so forcefully. Yes, they want strong public safety. And that means public safety centered on respect for human rights, whether that meant for George Floyd or Philando Castile, or for regular Minnesotans exercising their right as citizens to publicly gather and speak in protests. As their elected state legislators, we should not offer them the false choice of effective policing to deal with those set on causing harm or violating the human rights of the people. So this bill before you recognizes that the people deserve protection and respect for their constitutional rights. In passing it, we say those two are inseparable values, that we respect human life and that our public safety approach is centered first and foremost on that core value. There's nothing easy uh, I've learned about living to our values. You would think it would be, um, it's often challenging. And that's why we do things like we enshrine them in our constitution to remind us of them and of who we are. And it's also why we create due process, regulations, transparency, accountability, so that we guarantee to ourselves that we meet the things we most value. Of all those elements, uh, rather, all of those elements are reflected in the House Committee's work to shape this bill. Nothing more, nothing less. Members, there are modern policing practices that have been created and are still evolving that can meet the twin challenges our dedicated police professionals face that don't require violating the civil rights of George Floyd and of civil, civilian protesters. The time to learn from and make the, the expectation that those best practices be implemented isn't later, it's now. As the state steps up with new resources to equip safety's ability, public safety's ability to effectively guard our well-being. Being. As a state legislator appropriating vast amounts of the people's tax dollars Frankly, I never apologize for tying accountability to those appropriations. Protection of our First Amendment right is the ultimate responsibility of the state, not of local jurisdictions, even as we expect and should demand that they respect those rights. The ultimate accountability lies here at the state through our state instruments, such as the Pulse Board. I'll close my context setting arguments by admitting that this bill doesn't try to do all that needs to be done. It seeks to respond to a potential need for action now as the nation and the world's attention will become focused on Minnesota and on the unique trial that commences in just a few weeks. 
There is much for those of differing views to object to in this bill. Some would say it goes too far with police accountability. Others say it doesn't go far enough. And there are those who will say the state should not provide resources to help what they think is just merely a local reality. But in order to get us to action, um, I will have an amendment at the appropriate time that would narrow down the already reasonable accountability provisions the bill contains in order to secure support for responsible action. That's the nature of legislative compromise. But you should know that um, when I move that, it will be a major, major and momentary concession from representatives who come from communities who are always asked to be the ones to lead and to be the ones to give in order to have this body meet its core responsibilities. Members, together, let us meet what my colleague from across the aisle recognized in that text to me, the most pertinent subject in the state and nation right now. Representative Winkler. Madam Speaker, today our uh, majority colleagues in the other chamber engaged in a cynical and a moral political game, playing with people's lives. Last summer, after the killing of George Floyd by the Minneapolis Police Department, mass demonstrations were descended upon by bad actors intent on doing harm. Communities banded together to help protect property and business and homes. Ultimately, the National Guard was called out to help restore public safety in the city of Minneapolis and in the city of St. Paul. Hundreds of millions of dollars of property damage was committed. And afterwards, politicians showed up in neighborhoods expressing deep concern for the businesses, the people of color, the immigrant businesses that were damaged. The Minnesota House of Representatives has passed legislation to help rebuild, but it has gone nowhere in the Minnesota Senate, with Senate Republicans not even engaging in negotiation on helping to rebuild. The SAFE Act is intended to prevent that same cycle from repeating itself again during the upcoming trials of Derek Chauvin and the other Minneapolis Police Department uh, members who were charged. The state, the county, and the city of Minneapolis are engaging in a unified command structure to help make sure that there is an active and appropriate response. Community groups and community members are being enlisted to help. This is the kind of legislation that we should be passing. This bill today will actually help prevent what happened in Minneapolis and St. Paul last summer from happening again. But with the action of the Minnesota Senate today, they have taken a position which in the legislature is not possible to meet halfway. They, instead of working on legislation to prevent harm, have used this opportunity to demonize, attack, and make worse the trauma of people who've suffered so much already. Madam Speaker and members, there is much we need to do to prevent this kind of attack from happening again in our communities. There is much we need to do as leaders to make sure that Minnesota stands strong, but apparently we are not yet at the point at time, in time this legislative session where we can have a reasonable conversation with the Senate Republican majority. For that reason, Madam Speaker, I move that House File 445 be laid on the table. Representative Winkler moves that House File 445 be laid on the table. It's a non-debatable motion. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. please say no. The motion aye. prevails. House File 445 is laid on the table. Motions and resolutions. There are copies of the non-controversial motions at the House desk and online. Without objection, we'll take action on those motions first. Hearing no objection, the motions prevail. Morrison moves that House Bill number 570 be recalled from the Committee on Education Policy and be re-referred to the Committee on Early Childhood Finance and Policy. The member from Hennepin, Representative Morrison. Thank you, Madam Speaker. That is my motion. Uh, both chairs are aware, and this is a bill to limit individual screens in preschool and kindergarten. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Any discussion to the Morrison motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, please say aye. no. The motion prevails. Sandstead moves at House Bill number 917, recalled from the Committee on Education Policy and be re-referred to the Committee on Education Finance. Representative Sandstead, to your motion. The member from St. Louis, Representative Sandstead, to your motion. Madam Speaker, that is my motion. We have been in contact with both chairs and they have uh, approved re-referring it to education finance. Representative Sand says the custom and usage of the house to indicate what uh, the substance of the bill is on a motion of this nature. Representative Sandstead. This is a transportation um, bill and it is a disparity bill. Uh, it is fiscal in nature, and um, it was recommended that it go to education finance rather than ed policy. Any discussion on the Sandstead motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, aye. please say no. The motion prevails. Any further motions? Announcements? <clears throat> Representative Winkler. Madam Speaker, I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 3.30 p.m. Thursday, February 18th, 2021. Representative Winkler moves that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 3.30 p.m. Thursday, February 18th, 2021. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those aye. opposed, aye. please aye. say no. Aye. The motion prevails. Representative Winkler. Madam Speaker, I move that the House do now adjourn. Representative Winkler moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, aye. please say no. Aye. The motion aye. prevails. The House stands adjourned until 3.30 p.m. Thursday, February 18th, 2021.